Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. The one true statement that I think that we can all agree on is in a machining environment, you can't cut it if you can't hold it. And we all know that there's a million different ways to hold any job that you get on any given day. Well, today I'm going to show you something called an expansion arbor. So if you're a tradesman and you do this for a living, you know exactly what an expansion arbor is. Well, over the years, I've been faced with a couple of challenges that an expansion arbor was a perfect candidate to solve as far as work holding is concerned, but there was little things that just made it not practical, and that's when you evolve and you come up with new and fresh material. Anyway, got a bunch of parts sitting on my bench out in the shop, and I'm going to show you a couple of different styles of expansion arbors and a couple of different generations of each style to overcome certain work holding problems. So let's take a walk out to the bench. I'll run it down for you. Hope you like what you see. Alright guys, this is the most common type of expansion arbor. This is strictly an aluminum slug. Been drilled and tapped. This is a 5 16 18 screw, 82 degree countersink. Split six ways in a bandsaw, nothing precision. A relief cut so that the flex is a little bit amplified. If you didn't put this relief cut in there, these would be very hard to spread out. And don't get too crazy with how deep the relief cut goes, because when you put your six slices in, that wall can get pretty thin and you may lose the whole effect of flex. So you'll get a feel for it after a while. And whatever you do, when you use an arbor like this, this is going to go down inside of a part and you reach down inside the part with your Allen key and you tighten up on your screw and it expands because the screw forces the feet out. Uh, let me say, when you do this, make sure that the screw that you use extends beyond your cut. It'll be a lot stronger for the arbor, okay? But this just happens to be the only screw I could find right now, so we're going to use this one. Watch the gap open up as I turn this down. See how it flares? That's not distortion from the camera. That's the part actually opening up. It's a tremendous amount of force when this countersink hits that counter, you know, it's underside of the countersink screw and forces it out. Now when you're making these, the location diameters should be turned in an expanded state. So when you put this in your lathe, put a little bit of torque on this, open it up a little bit, and then turn everything to your finished size. That way when you're done and you stick your key back in here and you release the pressure, it closes down a little bit and it's easier to get your part on. Not a problem, right? Let's see if we can get down in there and turn it. Now for whatever reason, you need to hold on the OD of this part, or excuse me, hold on the ID of this part. Now it's in your collet or your chuck. You can access the entire outside of the part. Let's change this up a little bit. Let's say the boss tells you, we're going to make these out of acrylic, and you can't use an expanding arbor like this because the pressure is so great that it's going to blow up the acrylic. Now what do you do? Oh. I'll show you how I overcame that, feed you some food for thought, you can do with this as you please. This is a relatively unassuming looking little arbor here. This is a quarter 20 countersink screw. This is an 82 degree head on this, wherever you are and whatever kind of hardware you use, make sure you match the screw to the countersink. Now this is strictly a determined diameter, and I'll tell you why and how to determine the diameter. A sleeve, and a cap. If you have a piece of delicate material and you don't want to crack it, but you do want to drive it, well search around your shop for an o-ring. Anything close is fine, it doesn't have to be spot on. And you can see this o-ring is pretty far from being spot on. But, when you stretch it over top of a piece of material, it's going to get a little bit bigger. So keep turning your blank down until when you stretch the o-ring over top of it, it just about drags on the inside of your part. You're going to 
put the collar on just to start somewhere. Put the cap on. Put the screw in. Now this is an arbor that I developed many years ago to hold acrylic tube because every time we clamped down with the aluminum expansion ones it was blowing the parts up. So now when you tighten down on the cap watch the o-ring. The o-ring displaces because of the pressure it's a very even pressure and believe it or not it's as strong as it is gentle. So when you put that on there and you torque down on your screw, that particular O-ring is going to expand and it's going to drive this part quite solid. Now the reason there's a sleeve on this, if you find that a single O-ring doesn't do it for you, and you'll have to forgive my fumble fingers here, I'm looking through the camera, I'm not looking at the parts, and there's a just a tiny little delay so it's kind of hard. Put the O-ring on. And go get yourself another O-ring. There you go. Now when you squeeze it down, they'll both come out. I think you'll find that there's more of a front bias than a rear bias here. And believe me, this is incredibly strong. If you were to take uh, a piece of tubing like this that had a real thin wall and stick it on here and squeeze down on this cap, you would actually see bubbles in the OD of the material from the strength that this can offer. All right, so let's go one, one step beyond this. The boss comes and says, okay, here's your part. I want you to stick this on the expansion arbor and I want you to work on the back side, I want you to do some work on the opposite end of this. Now it's already been bored, it's already been undercut, it's real delicate, it's plastic, you can't squeeze it in a three-jaw chuck because you'll smash all these ribs. You say, okay, no problem. All right, we're just gonna take this guy right here, loosen it up, and do exactly the same thing you just did with the other part. Stick it on. Uh-oh, there's no hole in it. So now what? How do you use an expansion arbor on a part that doesn't have a hole? Well, not a problem. Take the cap off. And we go to plan B. Plan B is a threaded cap. Top, bring the screw in from the back. Ah, boss thought he was going to trick you on this one, but guess what? Not today, bud. And you stick that in there, you torque down on that cap. That cap displaces those O rings just fine. There you go. You just use an expansion arbor on a part that does not have a through hole. So I guess we could call this an expansion plug. And although there are no set dimensions for this, the one thing that you want to be sure of is whatever screw you use from the front, that the tap drill that you use for that screw is larger than the major diameter of the screw you come through from the back with. Since I used a quarter twenty from the front, and the tap drill for the quarter twenty is a 201, 201 is just a little bit bigger than a 1032, so I have a 1032 coming through from the back for the cap and a quarter twenty coming through from the front for the tube. So there you go. You have an expansion arbor that will hold ID, OD, whatever. Through hole, no through hole, doesn't matter. That's style number one. Actually that's style number two. Let's see what that other one looks like. Let's say the O-rings are slipping and you don't want to use the O-rings. Well, you get the same problem with this one. You 
can't get this one on, or you can get it on, but you can't tighten it. You can overcome that problem exactly the same way as the first one. But only here's your solution. An 82 degree plug. Goes down in the countersink. Screw comes through from behind. Now as you tighten up on that screw, there you go. It pulls the plug down into the countersink and expands the part. Stick it on, tighten it down. And that, my friends, is not going anywhere. That is very strong and will distort your part if you're not careful. So when you're using delicate material, plastics, thin wall brass, copper, uh, anything that's going to be influenced, be very careful on how much pressure you put on it. And you may wish to consider the O-ring style because the O-ring style is a continuous contact and it's very even pressure. Naturally, the more serrations you have to your arbor, the less distortion you're going to have. If you only had four cuts, it's gonna go off at 90 degrees and you're gonna turn your part into a square, actually. It's gonna have high spots and low spots. It'll be round while it's turning, but when you release the pressure on the arbor, you're gonna have an inconsistency in the thickness of your walls. There you go, guys. Two different styles of O-ring, or excuse me, two different sides of expansion arbors. A couple of different thoughts on each one. Through holes bottom holes it doesn't matter these guys will get you over the hump we'll get the job done hope you like what you see thanks for watching I do have one more thought for you when you make a conventional aluminum expanding arbor like this one and you're coming in from the front with your screw this is the most common type of expansion arbor you're going to find laying around a shop. The majority of the flathead screws you're going to find, the threads do not go all the way to the conical feature on the underside of the head. So when you make your arbor, drill and tap for the flathead screw that you're going to use, and then take a little bit bigger drill and go about an eighth of an inch from contact and knock the threads out. This non-threaded section here, that's bigger than the screw, will allow for the non-threaded section of the screw and allow you to drive the screw all the way down comfortably without galling up your threads. Keep it in mind. Okay, well aside from the conventional split aluminum or steel expansion armor, I hope you got a couple of good ideas on ways to get around your specific problem. Now, naturally, whenever I show a technique or present a thought or a process in my shop, not only is it to introduce you to that particular process initially, but to stimulate your thoughts and say, hey, you know what I could do with that? So take the idea, take the concept, apply it, tweak it, twist it, Modify it however you need to modify it to get your job done and uh, remember where you saw it Hey, if you like what you saw and you're going to leave me a comment hit the subscribe button on the way out Let's drive the subscriptions up. That would be uh, a great way to say thank you. Anyway, that's all I got I hope you got something out of that that style uh, expansion arbor package has served me well over the years And I will continue to use it anyway Joe Pye advanced innovations Austin, Texas I'm out